I almost, I almost mistakenly labeled this Commonwealth versus Penn State, but I changed that. Okay. And, and when you look at the picture, that's really what it is. Because you have the picture of the pedophile, Jerry Sandusky, and then you have Tim and Gary right up there next to him, and there's no way to equate those crimes. So from the get-go, the state is tying this to Penn State, and I think you'll understand why in a few minutes. So what's the bottom line here? Well, again, an emotional crime like child abuse, logic tends to go out the window, okay? So we read this grand jury presentment that's not put in chronological order. There's a lot of misleading statements. We've covered McQuarrie's statement backward and forward, but there's others. Um, there's D DPS and, uh, yeah, DPS. Um, CYS and DPW, who both failed, but are barely mentioned in this report. And then there's the hearsay testimony that I told you about with victim eight that doesn't make any sense. So here we are, Penn State getting hammered for our response to the 2001 incident. And the police and everybody else who has messed up are, are not really getting anything out of this. So let's take a look at how this thing was presented to us all. Aaron Fisher, uh, who prefers to be called Aaron Fisher and not victim one, um, was abused at Central Mountain. And according to the grand jury testimony, Central Mountain High School did everything right. Okay. Then we had victim two, seen in the shower by Mike McQuarrie. And of course, that incident was covered up. Uh, and then because of that, we have victims three, four, five, six, and seven, okay, who were all abused by Sandusky in the showers. If Penn State had only intervened when they should have, we could have stopped all this. And then there's this terrible incident in the shower that really shows that Penn State, from top to bottom, was covering for Sandusky. The showers were, the janitors were afraid to report that incident because the football program was all supreme. It was a cultural issue. Well, sounds like a pretty convincing story until you put it in chronological order. And then you see that all the abuse happened before any of this was reported to Joe Paterno or to Graham Spanier or to Gary Schultz or to Tim Curley. In fact, what you see is a gap in abuse for about five years after Penn State was told about this. And then Aaron Fisher pops up again in about 2000, 2005. So how would this be perceived if this was how the presentment was put out there? Would this have been Penn State not intervening and many, many boys being abused? Or would this be something else? What might that something else be? Well, remember, there were two other victims that came forward after this. So to be fair, let's look at those two other victims. Victim 10, 1997. Okay, Penn State couldn't have prevented that. They didn't know. Victim nine, abused in 2006. So that five year gap is still there. So then what would the question be? What's with this gap? Okay, how is it that nothing happened for five years? Did Jerry Sandusky stop being a pedophile? Um, why didn't the police find any victims between 2001 and 2005? Maybe the media would have been asking those questions. And if they did, they would have found out that in this case, the police didn't find any victims. That's right. The police did not find one single victim in this case. Let's start at victim seven, actually. Victims seven, four, six, five, and three were all identified by the mother of victim six. She called the police herself after getting a tip or after being contacted by Sarah Ganim, who gave her the name of the investigator. So five victims fell into the police's lap from that woman. Victims 10 and nine uh, phoned it in themselves. Okay, And the other people that are left are victims two and eight. And there are no victims. Those are the two crimes that the victims haven't been identified. So in the course of a three-year investigation, the police did not find a single victim. That's quite a story. Probably a story that the Attorney General wouldn't want a lot of people to know. 
So, what else was misleading? Well, at Central Mountain High School, they didn't do everything right. When Aaron Fisher and his mother complained to the principal of the school and the guidance council, they were told, go home, think about it. Jerry has a heart of gold. They went to, immediately to CYS and went on their way to CYS. The school was calling CYS to tell them they were on the way over. CYS was, or the school was doing a CYA. <laughs> and eventually, um, the Clinton County folks um, got to the bottom of this, and they were the ones who determined that Jerry Sandusky was a child abuser. But it certainly wasn't anything that the school did. In fact, it was Mike Gillum who called the school and told them to ban Sandusky from the premises. So uh, this school didn't do anything right. And in fact, I think when Gillum followed up, followed up with the school to tell them they were banned, it was just kind of like, uh, okay. You know, they, they were uh, more upset that Jerry Sandusky was not gonna be an assistant football coach there than they were about Jerry Sandusky being turned in as a child molester. And again, there was the incident at that school in the wrestling room that never got reported. So, we get to 1998, and this is a very disturbing slide for me, uh, because I called Dr. Chambers to talk to her about what happened. As the story goes, the boy came home with wet hair. And that's what upset his mother, because she learned that he had showered with Sandusky. Well, no, his hair was dry. He had a crew cut. It was the summer. Or, so his, his hair is dry. They're having a conversation about what he did. And as he's leaving the room, he says, Mom, we took a, sh we took a shower just in case you're wondering why my hair is wet. And the mother knew that was her son's way to say something's wrong, something's troubling me. Also, if you look at... Uh, the research on child sexual abuse. Uh, of course, uh, multiple showers, as I, you said there on the bottom, is one of the signs. I'll get to that in a minute. The other one is engaging in a topic about sexual conversations. So, uh, the two showers, okay. Uh, that piece of evidence is in Gary Schultz's notes, and I've highlighted it over there in yellow. Mother concerned something more. Kid took another shower last night in this AM. Well, that's pretty much a sure sign of molestation. Um, and then there's the other signs in Gary's notes. And what Gary's notes are, are the, the um, reporting from Schreffler to Harmon to Schultz. So you know that this isn't the, all the details. This is just the important stuff that the guy at the top needs to know. So, Jerry is giving the kid clothes. I counted on the four pages about 14 signs of things that you would consider possible signs of child sexual abuse. So, if I can do it, I'm sure that the guys, the people who are the trained investigators from CYS and DPW should have picked up on those too. Okay, and of course, in the grand jury presentment, it's put forth as an investigation by police detective Schreffler was closed by then Center County District Attorney Ray Grecar after there would be no criminal charges. Well, all right, so CP, uh, CY, CYS and DPW aren't even mentioned. But again, Dr. Chambers, she sent her report to CYS, so they knew that Sandusky was exhibiting grooming behaviors. She gave that report to the University Park Police and she provided an oral report to Childline, which goes to DPW. So all of these organizations knew that a licensed psychologist, PhD, had said Jerry Sandusky's exhibiting grooming behaviors. Okay. DPW ordered a second evaluation, and again, the police and the ADA said no more evaluations. We have the one we need. They brought in an unlicensed counselor to do the evaluation who said, no, Sandusky's just, op he's, he's doing what you would normally do if you're a male coach. Okay. They, they selected that evaluation over that of, a psycho of the licensed psychologist. So, Jerry Loro, the DPW investigator, said he couldn't find child abuse. So therefore, if the state can't 
make a finding of child abuse, the DA can't prosecute a case. The defense attorney would just bring in the DPW investigator to say, no, there's no child abuse here. So this isn't a Greek art decision. Essentially, it's a DPW decision. So another interesting thing. So they didn't mention that DPW and CYS were involved in 98, but they also did a good job making it hard for you to figure out that there were really six or seven kids who were under, who could have been investigated in 98. The mother of victim six, if you see in Gary's notes, the, the famous Pandora's box statement. Well, now we don't know who originated that statement because it could have been Schreffler, it could have been Harmon, it could have been Gary, it could have been John Miller from CYS. But the long and short of it is, the mother said, these kids all run in a group with Jerry Sandusky, okay? She identified victims three, four, five, and seven to the police. So it, if she identified them in 2011, she knew who they were in 1998. And that, that's pretty, pretty logical. Uh, the reason it was hard to follow in the grand jury presentment was, if you look on this chart, um, it said victim three met Jerry Sandusky in 2000. Well. There's the fall 1999 photo that says, nah, he, he knew him well before 2000. Um, and in the, and in the uh, it, he testified that his abuse occurred in 99. Um, you go back to the associations. Okay, victim three knew victim four. Victim four didn't know anybody. Uh, victim five knew victim six and some other boys. And as it turned out, they all knew each other. Okay, so. We had a group of boys who could have been investigated in 1998, and they weren't. And this, again, the state and their grand jury presentment masked this association. And so, what do you know about 98 now? Well, the precipitating event has been incorrect all along. It was not wet hair, it was multiple showers. Uh, lots of signs of abuse known to investigators didn't hear about that. Uh, didn't, didn't hear that there was a possibility of more than two victims in 1998. Uh, didn't even mention that C CYS and DPW were involved. And that there was no mention of the uh, differing evaluations of the child. So as a person who's done inspector general work, this part of my report has already been sent to the PA ta uh, ch Task Force on Child Protection. I sent it to Representative Scott Petrie, who wants to establish an Office of Child Advocate to oversee CYS and DPW investigations. And the 1998 investigation was a travesty. And this office needs to be set up because they failed the kids. There's, there's no two ways about it. So, we're moving on to the next finding, and that was that the, in the grand jury presentment where they said Penn State never reported this to uh, anyone. All right. Well, Tim and Gary, uh, Tim, Gary Schultz and Wendell Courtney both said they reported this to the local CYS. Um, what's interesting is the, the whole conversation around reporting this to DPW. Well, under the law, you make your report to the local child abuse, child welfare organization, and it's their responsibility under the law to make the report to Childline. So by Gary or the group deciding not to go to DPW, that doesn't mean that they weren't reporting it because Tim and Gary said, well, we don't have to go to DPW. We already went to CYS, okay? So nobody has refuted that Tim and Gary went to CYS. Um, it's the state's burden to prove that they didn't, all right? Um, the state's argument is that there are no records of this complaint in the system. Well, that's because if there's an unfounded uh, abuse complaint, it's expunged from the system. So if, they, if Gary and Tim called this in, or Gary and Wendell called this in, and the state sat on it, after 60 days, it just, becomes unfounded, and then for 120 days, it's gone. So CYS could have had it and not acted on it. 
and based on their performance in 1998, I'd say that's not out of the realm of possibility. Um, the investigator from the state, uh, when he checked into the incident, he still thought it was 2002. So when he called DPW and CYS and asked them, did the investigation occur? He was asking about 2002, not 2001. The person he called at DPW was the same guy who investigated the 1998 case. So that's not, uh, he's not very credible. Um, if he was, he'd have been called to testify at the trial. Um, the person he talked to at CYS was Carol Smith. Carol Swift Smith was the assistant director at CYS in 1998. Being the assistant director, it's likely that she had knowledge of that investigation and she knows what happened there. So I would say it's pretty open, uh, it's a pretty open debate uh, and, and the states could have a hard time proving that Wendell and Gary didn't contact CYS. And then, of course, this one that we've beaten to death, okay? Um, Mike, you know, th this started the firestorm. We've been over it. Uh, they couldn't get a conviction on involuntary deviant sexual intercourse. So Mike's story was not at all convincing to the jury that he witnessed uh, <laughs> anal intercourse. And so at the end of the day, what do we have? Well, it's a pretty misleading account. Uh, the grand jury presentment is a misleading account of the crimes, the time frames, how each organization responded to this. Um, you know, the police didn't find anybody. Like that, that's one of the most amazing things about a three-year investigation. Um, the high school, the child welfare organizations, they fell down on the job. And the only people who really took it seriously once they knew was Penn State. And we saw from the evidence that for some reason, for a period of years, Jerry Sandusky appeared not to be abusing children. So, at the end of the day, and again, it's kind of what Eileen said to you, we've got Sandusky in jail. We had the free report lauded by child, uh, child protection advocates saying, it's doing all these great things at Penn State to make the campus environment safer for kids. But what happens to the children of the state of Pennsylvania? The same people who let Jerry Sandusky roam for 14 years, who could have brought him to justice in 98, are still running the system, and that has to change. My investigation is gonna continue. Thank you.